The following is a non-profit fan-made version of the original radio program, The Shadow. All sound effects to this video can be found on YouTube and voices on Casting Call Club. Please support the official release. <laughs> Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The Shadow knows. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you, The Shadow. The Shadow is a man of mystery who strikes terror in the very souls of sharpsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. The Shadow, Lamont Cranston, a man of wealth a student of science and a master of other people's minds, devotes his life to righting wrong, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty. Cranston is known to the underworld as The Shadow. Never seen, only heard. His true identity is known only to his friend and lovely companion, Margot Lane. This month's drama, The Temple Bells of Mebod. The bells, Shadow. The bells of Niban. They will reveal you. Your third mistake, Sadi. And your last. <laughs> no, it is your mistake and your last. This is the end of your career as the Shadow. There, Margot. We'll make this a large evening, a couple of hours at the Cub Caleb. Does that intrigue you? Oh, lovely. But not too late. I have an appointment at ten in the morning at the women's club. They're trying to get some action on this terrible narcotic situation. Oh, yes. I read about that. Oh, that stuff is being peddled all over town. They found school children using it. The society women. Why, it's already caused half a dozen suicides. Yes, I know. It's terrible stuff. Oh, it needs the shadow to get to the bottom of it. Yes, I know, dear, but tonight I do enjoy being myself, Lamont Cranston. But the shadow only in a real emergency. You know, they, they tell me that there's a lovely Indian dancer at this new club Caleb. Indian dancer? Mm-hmm. You know, there's a place right there. Cub Caleb, driver. Yes, sir. Lamont, you are going to do something about it. You started already. Perhaps. Well, here we are. All right, driver, there you are. Thank you, sir. Ooh, that looks like young Jerry Gleason just going in. Yes, if I was that young man's father, I'd spank him and keep him home occasionally. Spoiled son of a wealthy sire. Mm-hmm. Here, let me have your coat. I'll check it in with mine. Hello, Jerry. Uh... Oh, hello, Miss Lane. Your father and sister well? I haven't seen them lately. Y yes, yes, I'm sorry, but I can't wait right now. I gotta see someone, and it's important. I I'm sorry. But Jerry! Uh-oh, what's the matter with young Gleason? I don't know. He seemed awful upset about something. He doesn't look well either. Pale and shaky. Mm, you're right, he doesn't. Something curious about that boy. Well, let's go in. May I show you to a table, sir? We'll take this table by the dancer. Thank you. Oh, there's someone getting up to speak. We seem to be just in time for the attraction. Apparently. Ladies and gentlemen, we take pleasure in presenting this fascinating and beautiful dancer of the Far East, Sadi Bellada. <laughs> for our first number tonight, she will give you the dance of the Cobra, Sadi Bellada. Look, isn't she lovely? Yes, yeah, real thing too, no Hindu. Hmm, it's odd, you know. Goodness, look, she's taking a snake out of that wicker basket. A live Cobra. Oh, heavens! You know, the cobra is connected with the old Indian mystium, the most ancient of magic. 
See how she quiets the snake, makes him sway the motion of her hand? Mm -hmm. It's a form of mesmerism. They never improved on that with all our modern psychology. I hope its fangs have been removed. They undoubtedly have. So this is the one they call Sadi Bel Ada. Jerry greets him with that strange look in his eyes. The epidemic of narcotics smuggled in. Sadi Bel Ada. Look how graceful she is. <laughs> she keeps looking over here, Lamont. Yes. He's coming this way. A souvenir for the beautiful lady son. Oh, oh, a bracelet! Thank you! Bismillah harim harmane near harim, my lady. Ah, you know the tongue of Mother India, sir. Only enough to make a small prayer. Enough for that, Sadi Bel Ada. It is good sometimes to know a small prayer. Hmm, in case of an emergency. Yes, you are very wise, sir. In case you meet someone who could destroy you, sir. I see. So long. What did she mean by that? I don't know exactly. Funny sort of thing. She seems to know something about me. I kind of recall where I've seen that face. What an exotic dancer. Look, she's stopping at the table by the door. <gasps> Why, it's young Jerry Gleason. She handed him something. Good lord. He's going out with her. What's the matter, Lamont? It just struck me, Mark. That boy's face, the color of the skin. You mean, drugged? Yes, the poppy of India. Oh, but not Jerry Gleason. Oh, that would be terrible. And our own friend, Claire Gleason, his aunt, who tried so hard to steer him right since his mother died, it'd just about kill her. Come, Margo. We must do something. We're going to. I did come here tonight with a vague idea of this Indian dancer might have some connection with this thing. With her veil threats and Jerry's interest in her. I'm pretty sure now. But what are you going to do? I think the shadow will pay a call on Sadi Bellada. In her dressing room. I think the shadow can strike back. Come in. Sadi. Yes? Can anyone hear us in your dressing room? Oh, no. Uh, what do you want, Alexis? A message from the captain. What then? Tomorrow is the day. The police are getting closer. We sail tomorrow night at eight. I am not afraid of the police, but there is somebody else I am not sure of about. You took care of Jerry Gleason? I gave him his medicine and sent him home. But you bring him tomorrow night. <laughs> do not fear, Alexis. Jerry will be with me when we sail. I have a way to let him know. Good. <sighs> but the air blows from that window. Close it, Alexis. Yes. Too bad we have to terminate the dreamt success of Sadi Balada and the club Khalif. Yes. But the Americans say business is business, yes? And we still have a small business with the rich papa of Jerry Gleason. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt the richest part of our business feat, Sadi. The rich man would pay well. <laughs> <laughs> Who laughs? Where are you? Speak! I am here, in the shadow, but I'm afraid you can't see me. Speak, and say who you are. Have you never heard of the shadow? Ah, the shadow. So it is you. Have I not someone in the past seen your face and known your name? I think so. <laughs> Did you enjoy yourself tonight? I warn you, Sadi Balada. Leave the Gleason boy alone. The boy whom you give the evil drug. I have no fear of you, Shadow Sai. I have a greater power. I hold the power of the Temple Bells of Nibban. Huh? You command the Temple Bells of Nibban, do you? Yes. Either you lie, or you desecrated a great gift. Put your strength against mine, and you will see how I desecrate that gift. I can cast your little spells aside and make them nothing. I can kill you. Kill me? The shadow, Sadi? Yes, if you dare to come to me again. Will you come? Who would refuse such an invitation, especially made by such a charming lady as yourself? Yes, I will come. And be sure you don't mistake my voice for when I do, Sadi Bellada. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner? Old man Gleason is outside and insists he's gotta see you. Gleason? You mean, 
Andrew Gleason? Sure, the big Wall Street banker. Friend of the mayor? Shall I let him come in? All this plain deficiency doesn't do any good. I want to see you, Commissioner. All right, Mr. Gleason. What the devil is this town coming to? Well, if you tell me what you're getting at. My boy is what I'm getting at. He's lying home with the worst case of denarian cream I've ever saw. Spent all night sopping up liquor in this rotten hunk of town. Mr. Gleason, if you think the police department's going around playing wet nurse to all the spoiled kids in this town, uh, is that what you came to see me about? It certainly is. Well, I happen to have more important things on my mind right now. Then you better get this on your mind, because if you don't, I'll see that there's somebody here who does. And I can do it. Good day to you. Well, seems this was a busy day, sir. What, with the drunken college boys and millionaires? This is another one of those. Commissioner Weston speaking. <laughs> Why you? You! Don't lose your patience, Commissioner. The Shadow has some information that may help you. Young Jerry Gleason is becoming a drug addict. What?! Yes, a victim of this blood drug is being peddled on our streets. It may cost you your job. Are you interested, Commissioner? <laughs> Do you hear, Margo? Yes, as though they came out of nowhere. The Temple Bells of Nibon. Listen, three soft notes will strike, and then the spell will be broken. They're gone! But how, Lamont? Here we sit in your apartment, listening to weird temple bells. Where did they come from? How did you do it? Not too difficult, Margot, dear. Those who learn the secret, its secret based on phenomenal telepathy, combined with the old science of yoga. The same magic what gives the voice to a shadow. That's a very odd, inspiring demonstration. If there should be someone who could command the temple bells of Nibon, the shadow will cease to be the shadow. You mean, you mean they could see you? Yes. At the last stroke of the bell, I would be only what I am. Lamont Cranston. My magic of invisibility, so to speak, dispelled by this greater power. And... And do you think there is someone with this power? I'm not sure. Years ago in India, a yogi priest, the keeper of the temple bells of the cobras at Delhi, taught me the mysteries. He taught me the mesmeristic trick that the underworld calls invisibility. There was a small girl, his niece, who used to sit and listen, staring up at us with her round, dark eyes. She was very clever. Clever. I often wonder what became of her. But the cobras! You don't know the Indian dancer at Club Khalif. I'm not sure, Margo. I'm not sure. Oh, this worries me, Lamont. Aren't you going into dangers too big for you? Don't worry about me, Margo. Worry about the boy and the other poor, miserable wretched toiled in this special drug traffic. Is young Gleason safe? Yes, his father made him go to bed. They thought he's been drinking too much. Well, I guess it's time I get busy. Have you found out anything else? One or two things. Sadi Balada's dressing room. I found a note signed by Captain Mellon on the freighter Alboric Castle. I think there's some connections there. I'm going to find out. First, though, I'm going to the zoo. The zoo? <laughs> yes, yes. I want to borrow a decorative little reptile from a friend, the caretaker. He usually is very blinding. Who opened the door? Look, hanging from the doorknob. <gasps> a snake. Oh, don't touch it. It's all right. It's a dead one. Hmm, with a note with it. So, she's not bluffing. She does know who I oh, am. Oh, Lamont, I'm, I'm frightened for you. What does it say? It says, dead cobras are better playthings than live ones. Was I mistaken? <gasps> Sari Bellata. Oh, Lamont. Margo, it's a challenge. But the bells, the bells of Niban. Oh, I'm afraid the shadow this time will get beyond his... We shall see, Margo. We shall see who is stronger. Sadi and the Bells of Nibon, or the Shadow and a Snake. I'll show them. They think they could keep me a prisoner in my own house. 
putting me to bed as if I was a half-grown kid. But, wh what's that? Jerry, you hear me? Is it you, Sari? Yes, my voice in your thoughts. Listen, Jerry, come to me at the docks where we met before. Your medicine is waiting. Yes, yes. Go aboard the ship I told you about. The Alboric Castle. You and I, Jerry. Yes. Yes. I am waiting, Jerry. But they've locked me in. Go through the window, Jerry. Come now. Yes, Sari. The w window. <laughs> Lane. Stand by for orders. Jerry Gleason has escaped from his house, but I have followed him to the waterfront, and I know where he's going. Get word to Commissioner Weston. Time is short. I accepted Sadi's challenge. Send harbor police to the freighter, Alboric Castle, which lies in the harbor, just off Bayridge Shore, ready to sail. Hurry, Mongo! <laughs> It's depressing here in this cabin, Suddy Bell. A little. <laughs> Why do you tremble, Alexis? I wish we were far at sea. Tomorrow way to real. Ah, uh, be patient. There are some notes to leave us to Bagatti. Yes. What was that? But there is nothing. Oh, it's you, Captain. Yeah. Are we leaving, Captain? Yes, we're getting on our way now. We got the boys stowed safely below. Below decks. And the rest of the medicine? Yeah, we got rid of that. Eh, well, what was left of it? A nice cleanup for all hands. Not counting this Gleason job. That will nest us uh, another hundred thousand. Or nothing, I don't know the fix. Whichever the dice rolls. And after that, we leave like kings, without a care, yes? With not even a conscience to bother you. <gasps> what? Who said that? I did, Captain. Shadow. Oh, so you're the one with your trick ghost talking magic, huh? I'll make a shadow out of you soon enough. That way, Captain. No? Here, lock that door, Alexis. It is locked, Captain Millen. But, but the portholes... No one can get through those. Not even a shadow. <laughs> Save your laugh, whoever you are. We got you. You're in this cabin somewhere, and this ship is off for bounds. Laugh that off! I think you've made three mistakes, Captain. One too many. Yes? Yes, Captain. But I did not make mistakes, son. That remains to be seen, Sadi Bellada. Then you will see. Hand me that wicker basket, Alexis. What are you going to do? Here, Sadi. I call the Temple Bells of Neban, Captain. The Shadow has the power to blind your eyes. A trick he learned in India from Yogi, who was my uncle. But I have a better trick. When the last bell sounds while the sacred cobra dances, you'll see the shadow only as a man. Get ready to shoot, Captain. Oh, I'm ready. And now, my cobra, to dance with the bells of Nebar. I wouldn't open that basket if I were you, Sadi Bellada. You watch my pretty cobra, son. He may find you even before the captain's bullet. You will die just as quickly. <laughs> Dead cobras are better playthings than live ones. Bismillahirrahman. Nirahim. Make your small prayer, son. And now my pretty one begin to dance. Be careful, sorry, Bell. The cobra must towards you. My own pretty cobra. He knows me. You hear the bell, Shadow? The temple bells of Nirvan. I hear them. When the last bell strikes... We shall see our prison. And I'm waiting for that minute. But Sadi, the cobra. Look out! It's going to strike! Uh, uh, Alexis, stop it! Quick! S stop. Drop that basket over, Alexis! Kill it! Sadi, Sadi. I am. I am dying. I warned you, Sadi Bellada. You take credit for this too, do you? No. Sadi should have known it was not her cobra in the wicker basket. It was mine. She's... she's dead. 
What's that? Who is it? Captain Millen. The police! They're boarding! What? No, please, Captain Millen, you do not shoot! It's a bit bad. Open the door! <laughs> Drop the gun! Out you come. Out! Put braces on both of them, Sergeant. Alright. <laughs> Dope smugglers, kidnappers, and from the looks of it, murderers. <laughs> this time the police were too smart for you. Oh, decidedly. Huh? Who, who's that? Thanks for coming, Commissioner. You were very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay for the shadow knows. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to a dramatized version of the many copyrighted stories which appeared in the Shadow Magazine and old radio program. All the characters or places named are fictitious, and any similarity to persons living or dead are purely coincidental.